Water chemistry. Is it really something you need to care about for extracting an amazing coffee? We partnered with the University of New South Wales to do some research on water chemistry and coffee. Stick around and you'll find out what the results of those studies were. Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Carr from the Coffee Science and Education Centre here at Seven Miles. In these videos, we review the best in class equipment, teach coffee skills, research the science that brings it all together. Hit subscribe down below to see more videos just like this one. So the research that we did with the University of New South Wales was twofold. The first one was to understand what the chemistry is being extracted in coffee using water. And the second one is how do we manipulate that water to get that best chemistry out of the coffee. To do that, we used a whole bunch of advanced tools. We used gas chromatography mass spectrometry, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, a bunch of other technologies with very, very long acronyms. But in the end, we found out what target chemistry you need from to get out of your coffee to make it taste good and how to modify that water to achieve that flavor profile. So we found quite a few things, but I suppose there were three key findings to the research that we did. Uh, the first centered around hardness. So hardness is effectively I don't want to go too chemistry into this, but the hardness is effectively divalent cations inside water. It's calcium and magnesium, more or less. Iron's in there as well, but look, it's calcium and magnesium primarily. Um, so we found that the concentration of calcium and magnesium inside the water, um, these are things, by the way, that cause scale in too high an amount. Calcium and magnesium in the water, um, the optimum concentration for them, for the we're gonna call it the best possible extraction, was 60 part per million. Uh, and this lines up quite well with what the SEA suggests. Uh, that calcium should be inside the water. Outside these regions, particularly below 60 part million hardness, uh, the concentration of the extracts dropped off quite significantly, um, such that you probably get a fairly weak and insipid extraction from your coffee if using hardnesses below 60 part per million. Above that, we found that extracts did increase, but it was a diminishing return. I'm pretty sure you'll see it on the graph, but you'll see that there's a slight uh, tapering off of the curve in the upper parts beyond about 80 part per million hardness. Um, and in many ways, this is actually a very, very good thing because you actually don't want the water to be too hard because as I said before, hardness causes scaling in the machines beyond a certain concentration. So avoiding those high limits, uh, you know, above 90 part per million hardness is actually beneficial for your machine. So it's one of those nice and rare times in chemistry where you get an optimum location for both flavor and machine protection. It don't <laughs> often doesn't line up that way when you do science. So it's nice to see that that happened. The second major finding centered around pH. Now pH is effectively the acidity of the water. pH below seven makes an acid, or water more or less acidic, and pH above seven, water becomes more alkaline. Coffee itself is an acid, so it makes some sense that actually as you increase the, as you increase the pH, um, that is as you make it more alkaline, which is the opposite of acidity, um, you get a much higher extraction. And we found that, that no matter how much you raise the pH, um, there was a significantly higher uh, extraction of the flavors that we were analyzing. So in other words, the higher the better for pH. But again, the caveat comes where if you're going for pH above eight, by the way, it's very hard to modify pH of your water. <laughs> I should say that now. If your pH happens to be above eight, you might want to consider treating it simply because the extraction can yield a lot more gas. Um, that's from a neutralization reaction. That gas can actually inhibit the flow of coffee coming through the puck. In other words, you might be getting two or three minute extraction simply because gas is holding up all that water. Um, so we would recommend pH between seven and eight. The final finding centered around TDS. Uh, now TDS is total dissolved solids. It's a term that's been thrown around a lot uh, around the, the coffee scene. Um, it's a word that I have a problem with because it means everything um, and nothing. Uh, so what we did TDS, we defined as non-hardness modifying salts for our study. Um, so in other words, things that don't have calcium and magnesium in it, no matter how much you increase the concentration of those, the concentration of the extracts coming out of the coffee didn't change um, until you got to the point where you could actually taste the salt. So in our case, we used sodium chloride. We had to get to about 1000 ppm sodium chloride before we got any sort of significant um, increase in concentration of extractions or extract. Um, so, and that was basically where you can taste the salt in the coffee. So now, do you like the taste of salt in your coffee? Maybe you want to, maybe you actually want to have sodium chloride in there, but I would recommend that you avoid that entirely. Um, so again, we recommend, don't even think about TDS when it comes to modifying extraction, it means nothing. One of the final interesting results that we found here is centered around Sydney water and what comes out of the taps here in Sydney. And I'm sure in other parts of the world, plenty of water is treated there. Sydney water treats their coffee, oh, their coffee, treats their water uh, in such a way that the stuff coming out of the tap 
is almost bang on what you want for an optimum coffee extraction. Hardness is in the right range, chloride's in the right range, pH is in the right range. So in other words, the stuff coming out of your tap doesn't need much treatment to extract a good coffee. Maybe put a filter in there to protect your machine from any of the nasty little bugs or maybe the nasty little solids that come out of the pipe work. But other than that, um, it was very, very good. So good job, Sydney Water. So you might be saying, Adam, this is wonderful. This is great. I now understand how the chemistry affects my extraction, but you know, how do I measure it? It's all very well and good for you to use the ICPMS at the University of New South Wales, but how do I actually measure it? Well, I suppose we have the same problem because we've got a whole lot of cafes out there and we need to do rapid water tests to make sure we're both protecting the machine and getting the best out of the coffee. We use a thing called the iDip, the exact iDip to be precise. This is what it looks like. You can find it online. And these things come with strips. Uh, so what you do is you generally put a bit of water in there, add a strip, and then what it does, it measures the color effectively that water turns when that strip's dissolved inside the water there. And ultimately it gives you a reading. It'll give you a reading of PPM, chloride, hardness, alkalinity, and a whole bunch of other measurements. Obviously we've told, we've mentioned in this video that pH and hardness are the primary ones to care about. Chloride's important for protecting your machine. Um, so it's important you get a chloride measurement as well and follow the manufacturer's recommendations for hardness in your area. Oh, sorry, hardness for chloride in your area. Um, but yeah, so that's the tool that we use. There are plenty of other ones available. Many machines come with basic strips um, that give an indication of whether it's hard or soft water and so forth. They're fine, except they don't give you a specific number. They'll give you a range. Um, it'll indicate whether your machine's protected, but it may not indicate whether you're getting the best out of your coffee. You really need a tool like this to get those numbers. Finally, once you've done the measurements, the, the, the other question is, if my water is outside the ranges you've recommended, how could I fix it? Well, really the only way to fix it, depending on what the issue is, high hardness, low hardness, whatever, is to put a bunch of filters on it. We have developed a heuristic with the University of New South Wales that tells us what filters we are to put on uh, based on the waters coming out of the tap. Um, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and ask us some questions around that. Um, we can help, um, but filtration is really our only option. Worst case scenario, you have to strip everything out of your water with a reverse osmosis system and then remineralize it with a dose that these um, filter companies can provide. Um, a lot of filter companies can do this. There's no one particular one that we're going to recommend here. Um, but yeah, suffice it to say, filtration is really your only option. So you may have found this video because you've heard something from some pretty high-end baristas that have said you need to dose salts into your water to make sure you get the best out of your coffee. Um, I would say the research that we've done out of here doesn't actually blow some of that stuff out of the water, but it does go to show that some of the stuff coming out of your tap just by itself, in and of itself, is perfectly fine for your coffee. In fact, it's, it's really, really good for your coffee. So you don't need to go ahead and start dosing up some salts inside your water to get the best out of your coffee. It may well be coming straight out of your tap. So that's all for me for now. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any further questions or you'd like to do any further reading, we have an article written up on this in the blog. It goes into a bit more detail um, with references and all that kind of stuff. If you have any further questions, feel free to put a comment below, send us an email, check us out in the podcast, Coffee Science Guru. I'm on that one. And yeah, until next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>